That again. I was buried beneath my shame. Who can carry that kind away? He was my till I met him. I was within, but Oh, my failures I try to hide. He was my till I met. You call my name. You call my name.
Just when you call my name, shout it. I pray that that cry. I know that I this lead to your glorious day. Oh, I love those hands. Call my name. You call my name, and I ran out of that grave. I don't think I could into your glorious day. You call my name.
You are a child of the Most High God. That means you walk in the authority of all that name brings. Father, we will no longer walk with our heads down. We will walk, Father God, as those who are children of the King. child of God. I am a child of God. I will not 
not cower in the face of the enemy. My circumstances tell me that I'm not because I am I am a child of God I am a child of God I am a child you Jesus we bless you we adore you we adore you we love your presence we love everything about you everything about you we can get enough we look forward to to another encounter with you we look forward to see your beauty to see you face to face to see the beauty of your holiness we adore you Jesus we adore you we bless your name. Oh God, your presence is better than life. It's better than anything. Yes, you're all that. What a 
powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is. And nothing compared to this. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. your name, Jesus. And oh, what a victorious name, name above all names, is your name, Jesus. And oh, what a glorious name, what a powerful name, is your name,
take time to let the spirit move. You can feel he's up to something. We just want to give him room. No rush in his presence. This morning the Lord was speaking to me out of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. And I just feel that the Holy Spirit is wanting to bring us into a place where we come into a mindset that is in the third heaven, that is a mindset that is out of that place of being ascended with Christ Jesus. That's it, that that place of every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. A few years ago, I was dealing with some situations in my physical body and and some symptoms and things that were going on that were a little bit disconcerting. And I remember I was out walking and the Lord spoke to me, said, uh, said uh, you need a checkup. So I'm thinking, okay, I need to go see my doctor. And he said, no, you need a checkup. You need to come up. And what he was showing me said, said, said the things of, that, that afflict your, and the things that afflict your mind are not present in heaven. You're a, you need to quit identifying with the temporary things of this world. And you need to identify with what who, of who you are in Christ Jesus, seated with him in heaven. In that place, there is no pandemic. In that place, there is no depression. In that place... There is no cancer. There is no diabetes. There is no crippling arthritis. There is no COPD. There is there is no AFib. There there there's there's no Oshida Maroga Masamregeche. Doesn't exist there. It doesn't exist there. In Colossians it says that we're to to, to set our minds on things above, where Christ sits at the right hand of the Father. See what happens is we get we, we, we it's 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 natural. It's natural for us to think in terms of what we see going on in the physical. It's natural for us to, to see in terms of what the what the media is saying. It's natural to see in terms of, of what our circumstances are saying. But I heard the Spirit of the Lord even saying to me this morning, said Gene, you need to come up higher. You need to come up higher. We don't live in a shakable kingdom. We live in an unshakable kingdom. We don't live out of the second heaven. We don't live out of the first heaven. We live out of the third heaven in Christ Jesus. We live the other side of the veil. You say, well, when I die, I'll get there. Well, Colossians says, you have died. You are dead. In your life is hidden in Christ. It, it, it lit, is hidden in Christ, in God. You are dead. I'm not waiting to die. <laughs> I, God's just waiting for my mind to catch up with what's already happened. And we need to catch up. We need to check up. Glory to God. I just sense that the Lord is going to begin to call some of you to visitations and understanding out of the third heaven. Where he's going to begin to, re- you're going to begin to read the word out of that place. You see, we, if we try to read the word in the light of natural circumstances, what we understand out of our mind. I mean, we're trying, to, we're trying to interpret end time events with the newspaper. How's that working out for you? How's that working out? Oh, do I take, do I take the, uh, 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 is the, uh, is the mask the, the, the. Uh, 
that Maricor is the, uh, oh, if I take the, uh, what do they call it, stuff, the vaccine, is that the mark? I got news for folks. I lost the mark 2,000 years ago. I'm not worried about the mark. I've been sealed in my forehead with the name Jesus. Glory to God. We need to start thinking, amen, as God already sees us. I'm not of the spirit of Christ. I have the, the spirit of Antichrist. I have the spirit of Christ in me. I'm not looking for 666, glory to God. I'm not looking for... I'm not looking for some one world dictator and I'm not afraid of him either because my life is hidden in Christ. Oh! God wants to begin to speak to some of you out of the third heaven. He wants to speak to you in the place where you're seated in Christ and he's going to show you how to live out of that in, your, in this life, in this place, in your circumstances. And people that are horrified about this pandemic. They're scared to death of the election. Oh my goodness. I'm not worried about election. I just want to make sure I'm part of the elect. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that I am. I'm chosen in Him. You are chosen in Him from the foundations of the world. Glory to God. You're of an unshakable Kingdom. Are you understanding me this morning? Get your head out of the earth. Get your head out of the mud. Get your head out of the first and second heaven. Get your head in heavenly places in Christ Jesus because that's where we live. That's our kingdom. That's our citizenship. That's where our names are written. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. I thank you this morning that you have given us an identity that is not subject to political upheaval. It is not subject to earthly disasters. It is not subject to kingdoms rising and falling, but it is subject to the name of Jesus. Subject to him who ascended at the right hand of the Father and ever lives to make it session for us. And Lord, it is in that kingdom that you speak to us. It is in that kingdom, Lord. Hallelujah. It is from the mercy seat, God, that you declare who we are and that you declare what we have. So Father, I release right now, God, revelation, wisdom, and understanding. God, I release, Father God, the mind of Christ to begin to be stirred up and activated in your people, Father. We thank you for it, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 And I just, just further heard that this third heaven this heavenly place in Christ Jesus dwells in us. We dwell in it and it dwells within us by the power of the Holy Spirit. And, the, and God is going to begin to birth revelation out of his word so that you can walk both in the third heaven and you can walk even in this present age in this present pandemic, even in this present upheaval, even in the midst of a shakable kingdom, you'll be living out of an unshakable kingdom. Oh, your foundation will be sure. Hallelujah. And your identity will be secure. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for revelation and wisdom of your word, Father God, that you're going to begin to speak to us, Lord God, out of your word. Father God, that we're going to open the book and we're not just going to see black letters on a white page, Father God, but we're going to see the realities of heaven. We're going to see the realities of the Spirit. We're going to see truth who is your son Jesus. Lord, we're not just going to see concepts. We're not just going to see precepts, but we're going to person, hallelujah, who is high and lifted up and his train fills the temple. Lord, we're going to see the embodiment of your glory. We're going to see the embodiment of your truth, Father God, and we're going to hear your voice, hear your voice, 
hear your voice. God, I just see spiritual ears being unstopped right now in Jesus' name. I see pandemic lenses being lifted. Hold up, my go. My, 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 my. Oh, sit in my tire. Thank you. So, Father, God, stirring up your people. And, God, that we will now be, we will not just live, Lord, out of the darkness of men's confusion. Spirit, we are in Christ. Father, I just break oppression right now. I break, I just break brain fog right now in the name of Jesus. I just break confusion and depression right now. I break fear and hopelessness right now in Jesus' name. And I call your people, Lord God. I call your people by the Spirit of the living God. I call you into the hope of your calling. Oh, oh, hallelujah. God, that they would see themselves as you see them and that we would know you, God, as to who you are. So, uh, you know, the prophet has spoken the word of the Lord and when we prophet speaks, then we have to activate what is prophesied. We don't just hear by the word, but we active in our faith. And uh, while Jean was speaking, actually during worship, I saw the Lord inviting people up to the secret place, inviting people up into that third heaven experience. And, and we have to activate that invitation. We have to say yes to that invitation. So, so Lord, I just want to release in agreement with what he has spoken, that invitation into that third heaven reality that on, not only dwells in the uh, no space and uh, time and, and no, uh, anyhow, you know what I mean, but, but also understanding that what lives up there, God and us and God, but also lives down here with God and God in us. And so, Lord, we just release that right now. And I want to release healing, too. The Lord showed me earlier this morning that he wanted to release healing. So we are releasing healing right now. And in weakness that has been caused by this coronavirus, we just declare that weakness broken, that spirit of infirmity across our nation, across this world broken. Uh, every person who has been afflicted by this coronavirus be healed now in the name of Jesus. A cancer healed. I kept hearing the word cancer is healed. Cancer is healed. So we just want to release that now in the name of Jesus. Uh, bones restored, blood cleansed. Um, just these infirmities that have come against us where we have felt hopeless. We break the spirit of hopelessness and release the life of Jesus Christ, the greater works of wholeness in us, wholeness and health in Jesus' name. Do you have something, Gene? pain uh, right now is being being healed is just being taken out pain uh, just chronic pain yeah right now chronic pain. pain in the hips uh, lower body uh, pain in the shoulders pain in the neck that uh, that just chronic pain right now some of you have been dealing with some pain issues for a while you don't even know how it got there yeah. so diagnose some stuff and it's been declared to you you're just going to have to live with this Ooh. I see yeah, pain being up, taken out right da, 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 da. so Father we just release da, 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 da. God we, Father I thank you that Jesus da, da, da. bore our pains and carried our yeah, sorrows yeah. on the cross 2,000 years ago and I'd say to you pain let let my people go that's right in the name of Jesus I command da, da, pain da, 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 to go da, 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 now in Jesus name nerve be healed be healed, bones be healed That's in the right. name of Jesus of Nazareth we yeah. thank you for it Father, inflammation go in the name of Jesus rheumatoid arthritis go in the name of Jesus of Nazareth we thank you for it Father, hallelujah yeah. and we just declare migraines gone that oppression of the blood vessels has to leave now in the name of Jesus and what I feel like is there's oppressing demonic spirits that are that are leaving right now they are going straight to the cross for jesus to deal with the oppression of uh mental illness lord uh emotional bondage lord is being broken free right now in the name of jesus and we're just uh agreeing with all these demonic illnesses 
to be gone now in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And, um, you know, if you feel something on you, just agree with me and command it to leave now in the name of Jesus. It cannot stay here. The presence of God is pushing every demonic force against you out and, and just releasing a fresh infilling of the Spirit in Jesus' name. death could not hold you let's declare that now we receive the word now we're going to speak it over our life and we're going to receive it and we're going to agree and partner with the word of god death could not hold you the bell don't be Matthew 19, 26 says that for men is impossible, but for God, nothing is impossible. So let's just finish with a strong declaration, because who called us? Men, the circumstances, or God? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. So all day long, nothing is impossible to our God. And we're going to finish seeing things and declaring things like he said it. In Jesus' name. I can do all things Cause it's you who give me strength Nothing is impossible Through you my eyes are open Strongholds are broken I am living by faith Let's say that again Through you I can do anything I can do all things This is you who gives me strength Nothing is impossible Through you blind eyes are open Strongholds are broken I am living by faith Nothing I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna live by what I feel I'm not going to live by what I feel. Deep down. Deep down, I know that you're here with me. I know that you can do anything. Through you, I can do anything. I can do all things. Cause it's you who give me strength. No. 
so good. God, we believe in you. And you know, as we declare nothing is impossible, that I can do all things, that is a declaration of faith. 
That is a declaration of agreement with what your word says. Your word says that all things are possible for those who believe. So we have declared in agreement with your word. And we know that there is a shift in the heavens. There's a shift in the atmosphere on earth. There is a breakthrough in the second heavens that, that just gives this downpour from heaven to us in this um, uh, almost like uh, invisible way. Uh, the suddenlies of God that will appear through all of this, Lord. We just thank you, God. We believe. God, we believe. God, we believe in you. And we just thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 So uh, I just want to remind you guys, this Thursday night's the miracle service. And, uh, you know, come out, bring your friends, because we're in a season of miracles. We're in a season of healing. We're a season of financial shift there is a season of abundance of the lord being poured out on his people so come expectant come knowing uh, i know that we're going to have testimonies from this morning too because i know that god has moved because that's what he does and he's good at what he does that's what i always say he is good at what he does so thank you god for moving on us this morning in jesus name amen Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, worship team. You guys are awesome as usual. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody on Facebook Live. And as you heard, Revival Experience is Thursday night. It's our miracle service. We come and uh, expect miracles. Not knowing what's going to happen, we just pray that the Lord shows up and we'll just be obedient. So this morning, uh, we have an opportunity to continue worship with our tithes and offerings. But before we do that, we know that God has worked in many people's lives this week. And uh, does anybody have a testimony they want to share this morning? Good morning. Well, as most of you know, and maybe there might be a person or two that doesn't know, but um, four weeks ago tomorrow, my husband walked into heaven. And um, it was a very sudden, very sudden happening. But the Lord said he would take care of me. And he has done amazing, amazing things. So every week gets more amazing. And I'm like, oh my gosh, Lord, this is incredible. So this morning while I was spending time with the Lord, I said, what testimonies do you want me to share this morning? Because... Every day got more amazing, got more amazing. And so he said, share these three testimonies. So it began last Sunday afternoon. So it began last Sunday afternoon. I was sitting at home, and my, my cell phone rang, and I got a call from a woman that I've never met. She lives over in Stewart, She lives over in Stewart, Florida. She is a very uh, wealthy widower, a wonderful Christian woman. And um, she, she said that I'd been on her heart, and a common friend of ours told her her husband passed away. And so she was talking to me, and she said, I, I really want to wipe out one of your major debts. I was like, oh, my gosh. And she said, what major debt? Did Bill leave you? And it actually was a, um, it's called Care Credit. It's a credit card. And he had had a lot of very serious dental work done. And the balance was pretty high. And um, I was actually kind of embarrassed to share that with her. And she said, okay, I'll send you a check tomorrow to pay off that dental debt. And um, it, there's not only his dental debt on there, but there's mine too because I've had a couple teeth. Uh, pulled and so forth. So anyhow, um, so that was uh, Sunday afternoon. Okay, so then Monday, uh, the funeral home called me. <laughs> and they said, okay, your husband's here if you want to come and get him. I Because I had him cremated. And then just to remind you, I had some friends um, that called me a few weeks ago. And God told them to pay for his cremation. So I didn't have to pay for that. That's like $1,500. Um, 
And so um, I went over to get him. Now, the undertaker that I had been dealing with was on vacation. And, um, but the other guy leads me into his office, and here's my husband's ashes in this most beautiful leather case. And I said, there must be some mistake. <laughs> I was expecting him in one of those corrugated little boxes, right? And he said, he said, well, Ryan, the man you were dealing with, told us the story about your husband's greatest last day on earth. And I don't think, uh, I asked Cindy for permission to share it with you today. It was um, the Wednesday, a couple days after my husband passed away, and I was spending time with the Lord. And I wasn't in a very good mood. <laughs> and the Lord said to me, well, you know, Bill had the greatest last day on earth before he walked into heaven. And I was like, really? How so? <laughs> he said, well, he got up and he made you his, your favorite um, egg, cheese, and sausage scramble. And you had a lovely breakfast together. I was like, yeah, you're right. That, that, was, that was fun. He said, and then a little later in the morning, he invited you back to bed. And you went back to bed with him for a couple hours. And I was like, yeah, Lord, that, that was really fun. Yeah? Yeah. And so um, he said, and after that, you got ready, and you went down to Sam's Club, and you bought your husband a rotisserie chicken. It's his favorite. And I remember him yanking that leg and thigh off that chicken, man. He was a happy camper. And this is just a few hours before he walks into heaven. And so the Lord said to me, then he sat down on the floor and he was putting away his godly books in perfect order. He got to do all the things he loved to do. And then he walked into heaven. And I shared that testimony with the, the undertaker and the undertaker shared it with the other undertakers. And he said, we were so blessed and moved by your story that we couldn't put him in the regular corrugated box. Oh, wow. <laughs> they put him in the finest leather box that retails for like $300. It's beautiful. And so God was just showing me how Bill deserved the finest box. Right. And we went outside. They carried his ashes and everything. And I said... Well, put him in the back seat. He always wanted to be chauffeured. <laughs> so he put him in the back seat, and, um, and, I, and I took him home. But I was just so, oh, I, I turned to shake their hands, and they took their masks off, and they hugged me. And that meant so much. That was the first time I had been hugged by a man, you know, since my husband passed away. And so that was just an amazing, amazing day. Then... It didn't stop there. Last Wednesday, I finally had the nerve to go in and sit down at Bill's desk. And, oh, there was the bill for the condo insurance, $200. I was like, oh, boy, God, I need $200, you know, to pay the condo insurance. So that afternoon, when I went to get the mail, the woman from Stewart, Florida, who's paying off his dental debt, and added $200 to the gift that she sent me. It was just the most amazing thing. I, and there were other things that happened this week, but I just, the Lord said share three of them. So that's three <laughs> out of probably about seven or eight. Save them for next week. Glory to God. <laughs> yeah. Save them for next week. That's awesome. <laughs> Anybody else have a testimony they want to share? Karen does. So good, isn't it? As you know, we have ministry class here on Tuesday nights. And, well, currently it's on Zoom, but we have the ministry program. And already for next January, we have someone signed up. So I'm just praising God. I'm so excited. I look forward to the new class in January. We'll actually be running two simultaneously. So thank you, God. Right, and if anybody has interest in the, in the Ministry International and the Gathering School of Supernatural Ministry, uh, let, uh, let us know and we'll get you the information packets, and that starts in January of next week. I have a testimony. 
So I had to text my son to see if it was okay. I cannot post, but I can say it out loud. My daughter-in-law is pregnant. We just found out. My son called me when they were in Mississippi. It's, she lost her gumpa. Uh, he was 92 years old, and he helped raise her. Her mom wa is a flight attendant, so she was gone all the time, and her dad lived in another state, so he helped raise her. So uh, the day, I think it was the day of his uh, celebration of life, she found out she was pregnant. And my son called me and said, we just found out four minutes ago. I'm like, okay. So I said, can I share it? He said, don't post it, but you can share it. So we're celebrating uh, another one. So we're just going to have a plethora of babies running around. <laughs> you need a bigger car. Yes. <laughs> it's <laughs> a true. A truck, a van, big van, big cargo van. Yeah. Anybody else have a testimony to share? Great. You have one? No, you don't have one. You're just so blessed you have <laughs> testimonies every day. <laughs> so we have time to bring our tithes and offerings this morning. And, and before we do that, we're going to say a declaration. But, you know, a declaration is a formal announcement of the beginning of a condition. Mm -hmm. So we like to say a declaration over our offerings. And because we know that nothing happens in our kingdom unless we declare it. So if you would stand with me, we'll say our declaration, bring our offerings forward. Here we go. In the name of Jesus Christ, we declare our community saved. All people are esteemed and know the Lord. Our government is based on the word of God. We release justice, honesty, and honor over every person. Marriages are strong. Families worship and pray together. Children are friends of God. We walk in his favor, growing in wisdom and stature. Moral purity is our baseline. Sickness and disease are gone. Premature death ends now. Nursing homes become a place of life. Miracles, signs, and wonders are common. The hungry are fed. Food is abundant. The homeless are housed. We release peace, prosperity, and love wherever we step. We say yes to your plan for our community. Thank you for using us, Lord, in bringing your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Amen and amen. Thank you, Father, for these gifts and these offerings. Several ways to give other than bringing it forward. Text online and through our, our, uh, our website, wearethegathering.com, and the donate button. Thank you. Have a great Sunday afternoon. Get out of my way. Okay, that was so good this morning. <laughs> let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Yes. Amen. Amen. And we know that um, there's just so much wonder that God is doing. So this morning we're going to talk about the more of God. And the question is, are you in? Are you in for the more of God? Yeah. Do you want the more of God? Yeah. Do you want what he has for you? Yeah. I want to see some running around the church. Where's Matt? I need Matt to run around the church for me. <laughs> I really, I'm just going to share from my heart. I I've been thinking about this a lot. I read a scripture out of Isaiah 12, and I'm just going to read out of the Passion Translation. Don't worry about this, Noah, uh, to put this up, but... This is what caught my attention. It says, um, it's Isaiah 12, and this is the Passion Translation. It says, in that glorious day, you will say to one another, give thanks to the Lord and ask him for more. And so I began my little process because I am not shy in talking to the Lord about whatever. Whatever it is, I'm, I'm like, let's chat. And so I began my thought process of ask the Lord for more. Well, I was thinking, okay, Lord, what would I ask you for? And he knows I have a list that goes on and on and on and on. And I actually have things written down. And when, they, when he fulfills them, I write the date down. Because I keep up. So I remember, you know, the whole thing is we're to remember what the Lord has done. So I write it down. I, I have lists and lists and lists and dates and all kinds of good stuff. He has done so much. I mean, it, it is just amazing. And that's the stuff that I've caught. 
You know, he does stuff that we don't even realize he's done, but he's done it on our behalf. So I made the list and, and, um, you know, I was talking about the world harvest and healing and all these different things. But then, you know, I was like, God, you already know all this. What I really want is more of you. That's what I want. I know I have a lot, but I want more because I know that there's more. I know that. I know I do not have everything that God has offered. I, I just don't have it all. I know I don't because every day I get this new nugget or this new perspective or this new understanding or this new revelation or presence from him. And I'm like, oh, there's another piece. You know, there's another, you know, my mind is like, boom, blowing up. And I said, I just want more of you. And I just, heard, I just felt him say, you know, more is a two-way street. You know, he wants more from us. He wants more from us. And so today we're going to talk a little bit about this more thing and are we really into the more. And part of it, we're just going to kind of do like Jesus 101 this morning. Because I was uh, talking to one of my friends up in New Jersey, and they're still pretty housebound. You know, they're still pretty uh, trapped in their houses. And I was talking to her, and she was saying, uh, she was telling me about something she had read. We're going to do a conference out in Phoenix in September together. And she said, you know, I was reading something from a Barna, a Barna uh, survey, and it said that only 17% of 90 million Christians, so think about that, 17% of 90 million, give or take, Christians have a biblical world view. Now think about that. Because you know, probably when you ask everybody, do you have a biblical worldview? Yeah. But they did a whole list of questions that were scriptural, biblical, and then they had people, you know, uh, respond to the survey of whether they believe it, kind of believe it, don't believe it. And only 70% actually sent it back that they have a biblical worldview. So that's, uh, you know, 9 million and some change. It probably about, uh, you know, what, 17% of 90? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Anyhow, it's probably about 15, uh, 15 to 16 million people, million Christians have a biblical worldview. And they defined a biblical worldview. Um, this is how it was defined. That you believe there's an absolute moral truth. That the Bible is totally accurate. That Satan is considered real, not symbolic. That Jesus lived a sinless life on earth. And that God is the all-knowing, all-powerful creator of the world who still rules today. That's, that's what they considered. That was kind of their six parameters of a biblical worldview. And so we're going to go through John 14. Actually, the Lord said, I want you to read John 14. So I did. So that's what we're going to do today. We're just going to read John 14, and we're going to talk about it a little bit. Because when we think about uh, that word that uh, Pastor Jean gave earlier was so powerful about how we don't have to worry about what's in the second heaven and the first heaven because we live from that third heaven. And when, when he was talking about not only do we live from the third heaven, we are hidden in Christ, but we also carry the third heaven in us, Christ in us. So we win all the way around. We have access, we live from there. Because of what Jesus did, he broke through the ability for us to enter into the throne room. So we have access. The, uh, I shared the vision earlier that the Lord said you can access him wherever you want. There's secret places available to all of us. So we have that access. It's such a good word. So let's go to John 14. We're just going to read John 14. And I'm going to read it out of the New King James uh, Bible. So <laughs> verse 1, it says, let, your heart, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. 
In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may also be. And where I go, you know the way uh, and the way that you know. So I want to talk about believing for a minute. We had a whole Thursday night study on this about faith and believing. But I want to read something um, out of, uh, um, I, didn't t I didn't write down where I got it from. Anyhow, it was out of a, a Hebrew commentary. But it talks about the first use. You know, there's a, there's a law of first mention in scripture. The law of first mention is when that specific thing is first mentioned, it gives the parameters for the rest of the times that's mentioned. So when believe is first mentioned, it's in Hebrews, I mean, it's in Genesis 5, 15, 6. And it says, recall that the first use of the word in scripture is often significant because it establishes the, the uh, general principle of it. So in Genesis 15, 6 says, Abram believed in Jehovah. The Hebrew verb is A-M-A-N. Amen. And it says that he believed in the Lord, Genesis 15, 6, and he reckoned it to him as righteousness. The use of that word believe there indicates that Abram did not just give mental assent to God's promise. And this is key for us. Because we tend to intellectualize everything that we hear. It says that Abram didn't live here for that. But he relied on the promise and made a personal commitment to the promise of God. He made a commitment out of who he was to the promise of God. It wasn't just a mental check off I believe you God but it was a it was this deep soul connection to what God has promised and and that's where we want to really land for a minute because it is the personal connection with God it is that personal encounter with God because he had an encounter with God before that, that seals the deal. Like Gene said, you know, we're not looking at the mark of the beast on us. We've been sealed with the blood of Jesus. It's that personal encounter with God that seals what God has promised in us and gives us that ability to believe, to have faith. It comes from the depth of our spirit not through a process of our intellect. It doesn't mean we don't use our mind. It says, in other words, Abram's faith was not only cognitive, the mental act of acquiring knowledge, but was also personal, for he believed God for his promises. And Jesus in John 14 is asking the disciples, believe in me. Believe in me. Verse 5, Thomas says to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way. That is one of the biggest challenges in the Christian world right now. And I have tons of statistics, but I'm not going to bore you with them. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. About 67% of Christians today believe that whoever anybody prays to is, is God. It's where New Age has immersed itself in Christianity. So they do not believe that Jesus is the only way to the Father. They believe that through our own journey and our own personal truth, what we've decided is true. We no longer believe in one moral truth, but it's what we've decided is okay. So if you decide that the way to Jesus is through Buddha, I mean the way to the Father is through Buddha, then that's okay. 
because that's your personal revelation of truth. But what we have to understand is that is not what the word says. And we have to believe the word. And, you know, we may not understand everything in the word. Who understands everything in the word? There are no, oh, hand raised. No, there's no hands raised. There's none. Because we don't understand it all because God is revealing it to us as we go. But we have to declare that the word is our truth, whether we understand it or not. That's the reason there's body life, because we learn together. That's the reason we share the word with one another. We have studies together. That's the reason the revelation of the word comes to us through the spirit, through Jesus Christ. So, so we have to understand what we're fighting against in the demonic realm is the challenge to the very word of the living God. That's what we're fighting against. And it is a challenge to our mind in what we're willing to believe that makes us feel better versus what God has called us to believe that actually transforms us. You know, transformation can be painful. We know transformation can be painful because we have to choose to let God turn us inside out. I know um, it's funny, you know, you can, we can all tell stories about when God got a hold of us and, and we're like, no, that can't be right. But you know, when God gets a hold of us, something changes. And even though we may fight it, how many have fought with God over transformation? I have. I'm like, are you sure? That's like, I'm positive. <laughs> but part of it is because we, we wrestle with our flesh. We wrestle with what we want versus what's best for us. I mean, can you ever remember your, your mom telling you what's best for you? And you're like, that's not best for me. And then we grow up and we sound just like our mom. This is what's best for you, you know? And that's the way Jesus is. He has what's best for us. He has what's best for us. So that is one of the biggest challenges we're having right now is John 14, 6, is not believing that Jesus is the only way. Okay, verse 7, it says, if you have known me, you would have known my father also. For now, uh, from now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father, and it is sufficient for us. So Jesus just, you know, it's funny because it's this debate with God. And it's not that we're trying to challenge him. We just don't understand. You know, the disciples were with him for three years. They just didn't understand. We've been with him, some of us have been with him all of our lives, 15 years, 30 years, 40 years. We still don't understand it all. And Jesus is saying, he says to him, uh, verse 9, have I been with you so long and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. So the only way we can get to the Father is Jesus. And it's funny because we ask God for proof and think about all the different things that he's done in our lives. If we, if we start just making the list today, just and shared, just, she said just three things, but there's probably nine. I was praying with someone on the phone last week and um, in, the, in the midst of praying and talking and that kind of stuff, they had nine testimonies just sharing that God had done that a couple of them were miracles, just instant miraculous breakthroughs. Some of them were things that happened over time, but nine testimonies in a matter of an hour of us just talking and praying together, nine. The proof that Jesus is alive and working on our behalf is right here inside of us. It comes out of our lips as we begin to share. 
And that's what we see is we see the Father through the works of Jesus on this earth. We see the amazing things that he does for us. Verse 12, it says, Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will, he will do also. So I want you to say, I do the works of Jesus. I do the works of Jesus. And the greater works than these he will do. And the greater works. Because I go to the Father. Now, and whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. So I want you to say that. So whatever I ask the Father in the name of Jesus, the Father will do. And he does it in order, it says, to glorify the Son. So whatever God does through us, he does it so people can see Jesus. We're like a display banner for God, for his Son. I mean, just think about that. We're like a display banner for him. <laughs> Don't you want more? Yes. I just want more. I'm like, I want to display more. Yeah, I've had the occasion the, uh, over the last two months to spend time with people who aren't, um, uh, I don't even know how to say that, but uh, some who aren't believers, but some who are believers but haven't encountered Jesus. And I was that person for a very long time. I'd had an encounter with Jesus when I was nine years old, when I was very, very young. And then, uh, you know, my family, uh, we were on the austerity program, no Jesus. Only if my grandmother came did we ever hear about Jesus. And so there wasn't, I didn't have anything. I would go to the little church behind our house. We had a church in, behind our house. And I would go to the church behind our house. And I'd do their vacation Bible school. I'd do all this. And, but I never could find the Jesus I encountered in the church. And I'm sure that was all me. You know, I'm not going to say it's, it's anybody's fault. Because we all are open to God moving in us. And he moves on us, and we can't say, you know, I didn't know how to pursue him. I didn't know how to do any of this. But, um, and I just started getting hungry for the more. I wanted more. And what I realized when I read that there's 17% of the people who declare themselves as Christians that don't live a biblical worldview... And on top of that, I forget what the other number was, but it's like 60-something percent that don't actually believe the fullness of the Bible and don't actually believe that Jesus was sinless or was the Son of God or this or that and the other who have made a um, uh, kind of their own recipe of the gospel. All I could think of, I was crying out last week to God, is God, let them have a real encounter with you that will transform them. Because it is the encounter that brings transformation. It is the encounter, like Jean said earlier, it's the, God is going to release revelation of the word. So you're not just reading black and white. You're reading a living word that is consuming your whole body inside out when you read it. And I remember telling Jesus, I, I got to have more. I got to know the realness of who you are. You know, I don't want to make any more spaghetti dinners. We made a lot of spaghetti dinners when we lived out in Texas. You know, yeah, I don't want to do any more of the things. I want to do the one thing, and that's to know you. And I was doing an interview with Rita the other day. She has a new show. It's called The Pointer. It's going to be released on September 5th. We'll give you all the information when it does. She's doing interviews and testimonies. And I was doing a show with her. And I was talking about, you know, the one thing we need is that powerful encounter on a regular basis with God. Every day, we should wake up with the expectation that there is a, a personal encounter with God that we're going to have. That I don't want to know God through my intellect. I want to know him through my spirit. 
that, that captures my soul, that brings my mind with it, that my body follows. You know, that's what I want. And that's as a, as a body. You know, we're talking to the body of Christ. That's what we need is we need this wild encounter with God that will turn us upside down and shake out all the unbelief and all the lies and all the other things that are in us that keep us from fully wanting more of him and receiving the more that he has for us. You know, he wants the fullness of our hearts. Okay, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. So love is an action. And doing what he says is a sign of our love for him. And I will pray the Father to the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. So the world does not see the Holy Spirit. That's what it says. They don't see him. They don't know him. But we see him. We know him. He lives in us. We have been baptized in power and in presence. We have the wholeness of God that dwells inside of us. His tabernacle is inside of us. So we are a walking time bomb for God. We just walk along and go, and God's released. We say hello, and the power of God is released. That is who we are. We may not walk like that's who we are, but that actually is how God designed us. He says that you will receive power. Those who believe in me will receive the power and presence of me living in them. So everything you do will be the greater works. Everything that you do, everything that comes out of your mouth will release heaven on earth. Everyone you touch will receive the power of God on them because that's who you carry. I'll never forget the first time I heard Bill Johnson from Bethel say uh, that he was just standing in the health food store trying to buy something. This lady walked up beside him and she just fell on the floor because the power was on him so the more of God. Does anybody want that more? Yeah, I went and tried. I went and went. <laughs> just standing beside me going, enough. Because you just want evidence, right? We want to see that they're just like, what do you got? I got God. You want some? You know, you, you want people to run to you. But what God's saying, I want you to run over them. Touch them. Let them know that God is love and he loves them. And I, I just, yeah, can you imagine what's that like? And uh, Jean gave a word in our Thursday night a couple weeks ago that, that September is going to bring a dynamic shift in miracles and healing, in the release of the presence of God. And we already have an abundance of it now. Can you imagine it exponential? Because we know that that becomes a sovereign move of God when he does something that's already here that is magnified to what he's already been doing. So there's that exponential release of God over us. This is good. You know, you can read the word. It's good. It doesn't even need all the extra verbiage with it. We could just sit here and read the word out loud. And the word activates our spirit. And it transforms our heart. And it changes our mind. Because the word of God is alive in Jesus Christ. That's right. Whew. So good. Okay. Let, let's, keep, let's keep on. So he's not going to leave us alone. He's given us the Holy Spirit that abides with us forever. Verse 17, he is the spirit of truth who the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But it doesn't mean they can't. It doesn't mean they can't. But you know him for he dwells in you and will be with you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come for you. A little while longer, the world will see me no more, but you will see me because I live you will also live. Each one of us live. At that day, you will know that I am in the Father, 
and you are in me and I in you. So think about that. So Jesus is in the Father and you're in Jesus and Jesus is in you. So where's the Father? In me. That's right. And Jesus says that in John 17, 20. Let me just flip over. I want to read that real quick. 17, 21 also when he's... Uh, let me find it here. It says, 1721, it says that they may know, uh, sorry, that they may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they may also be one in us and that the world may believe that you sent me and the glory which you gave me, I have given them that they may be one just as we are one. Amen. Right? So we are one. We are one in the spirit. We're one in Christ. We're one with God. Verse 21, it says, He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. That just makes you think, doesn't it? So what if you have his commandments and only keep some of them? Does that mean you just love him some? You know, whatever we understand from the word, God says we're accountable for. So if we understand that we are not to profane his name, then when we do, he holds us accountable for that. That we have to repent and turn from that. If we get drunk we know that we are not to get drunk because that's what the word says so when we get drunk if we do if we drink then we are held accountable for whatever we know and choose not to obey not only does it show our lack of honor and love and respect for christ but we are actually held accountable for that and we have to repent and clean our slate and ask God to forgive us, just like we would anyone else, to make sure that there is nothing in the way of our love, our obedience, and our relationship with God. Verse 22, Judas said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world. And Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love him. And we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the father who has sent me. I just feel like the Lord is just kind of sending out a wave of conviction for all of us uh, because this is, a, this is a time where, and we've talked about this a little bit, where that plumb lightning's been pulled and the mark's been made and we have to decide where we're going to stand. Are we going to stand on the word of God? Are we going to stand knowing that Christ is in us and that we are in him and that we have all power to be able to do all things through the Holy Spirit. Where are we going to stand? Are we in? Are we in? Verse 25. These things I've spoken to you while being present with you. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. He will bring to your remembrance all things I said to you. Peace I leave with you. That peace is all-encompassing. It is wholeness. It is prosperity. It is blessing. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives, you, gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You have heard me say to you, I am going away and coming back to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I said I'm going to the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I've told you before it comes that when it does not come to pass, you may, so when it does come to pass, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you for the ruler of this world is coming. He has nothing in me, but the world may know that I love the father. And as the father gave me 
commandment, so do I. Arise, let us go from here. So I want to talk about a couple other things before we pray, because I want us to pray. You know, this is uh, uh, kind of a, um, it's almost like a solemn message. Because I feel like the Lord wants to stir up in us whatever is not aligned with him so it can be evicted. Just like we prayed after worship, we have to pray during worship for healing, for anything that's coming against us. But I feel like the Lord wants to stir up in us a spirit of conviction for the things that we know are true and are not walking in that truth that we will step into it, that we will step into it. Because we don't want to give the enemy any territory of access to us. And when we know what the word says in our heart, in our spirit, we know the Holy Spirit is living in us and we decide not to do it. It says, enemy, we're inviting you to partner with us because we've decided this part of God We're not going to partner with, which, which leaves an open space for the enemy to come against us. And we do not want any room for the enemy to come against us. We don't want to give him any territory. The righteousness, the holiness that he has given us, he says, be holy because I am holy. That has been given to us. It's time to crank that up a bit. And, um, okay. So, Lord, I just thank you, Lord. I don't know if I'm going to go here or not. So let me just think for a minute. Let me just pray for a minute. So, Lord, thank you. <sighs> I'm going to go to Colossians 2, 7, 10, uh, 7 through 10. I don't believe I gave you that, Noah, but you're fast. He is. I'm, gonna start, I'm actually going to start in um, verse uh, 6. It says, As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord... So walk in him, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. So that is all of us and all of you watching online. And if you're watching online and you have not given your life to Jesus, then you just say, yes, Jesus, I'm all in. I'm with you on this. Verse 8, beware lest anyone cheat you through uh, philosophical and empty deceit. According to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. This is where we're in battle right now. Because there are lies coming out that we are believing hook, line, and sinker that sets itself up against the word of God. There are things being said that we are believing that we would find the opposite is true within the word. And there is an attack against the body of Christ from within the body of Christ. We don't have to worry about the world attacking us because we attack ourselves. We attack each other. We call each other names. We dishonor our leaders. As leaders, we have dishonored the people that follow us. 
we have not represented Christ well. And not every day, everybody, you know, if you're offended, I'm sorry. But we have got to learn that the word of God has got to be coded with the heart of God, the love of God. And not coded with our own opinion that does not look anything like the word of God. So I want to encourage us to be the people who are obedient to God because we love him. That is the display of our love. And obedience to Christ means that we love one another as we love Christ. That we think of others higher than ourselves. That when we offend, hurt, or cause damage to someone else, that we are the bridge of reconciliation toward them, asking forgiveness, building that place, re reestablishing the lines of communication. Because it's, it's this body that is the changers of the world. But we have to honor the body even in our differences. Verse 9, it says, For in him dwells all the fullness of, of the godly, head, godly body. Shoot, let me start that over. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him, who is the head of all principality and power. We are complete in him. So, in closing... I want everybody to smile. Because <laughs> I know sometimes the word cuts us because the word heals us. And it wants to, the word is used to take away the things that don't align with the word. And we have to encourage each other in the places that we're at to align themselves with the fullness that God has for us. So if we want more of God, we've got to give him more of us. We've got to be all in. We've got to say, God, if there's anything in me that doesn't line up with who you've created me to be, if I have believed something, like when I, I, when I was growing up, I believed at, almost every Sunday, basically, I had to get saved again because I did something wrong the Sunday before. And when they played the song, we had to go. We had to go, or we weren't going to make it till the next Sunday, you know? But, but that was a tradition of man. That's what that word in Colossians said. That was a tradition of man that we were taught. We didn't know that we could just say, we were sorry, please forgive us, Jesus. We won't do it again. We thought we had to get saved again. So there were a lot of traditions that I had to get rid of. You know, that if, that if I did something wrong, that God would never have anything to do with me again. You know, there were things I, were I was taught that I thought was the word of God because I didn't know the word of God. But then as I began to really learn the word of God, I realized I had to go through a process of getting what was wrong out of my mind so I could get what was right into my spirit. I had to detox from things I'd been taught. God wants to detox us from the things we've been taught. God wants to detox us from the things that we think are not really a big deal to him. Everything that sets itself up against the word of God is a big deal to him. It's a big deal. If we decide whatever our favorite thing is that we know deep down inside isn't right to God, that he doesn't really care, then we don't know who he is because he cares about everything. He cares about everything we do. He cares about everything we say. 
He knows that our words either align with heaven or align with devil. He knows that our actions either bring him glory or empower the devil to have more room. He knows that our thought life either strengthens us or oppresses us. There's not really an in-between life. There's no in-between life. We can't live in between. We have to be all in. Are you in? Am I in? Do I really want more? Am I willing to give up whatever it is to get more? Yes, I don't know what it is until it comes, and then I'm like, really that? But eventually we say yes, right? But it's really all about understanding the power of Christ that lives in us. And that he has more for us than we can ever imagine, that we can ever dream of, if we're all in. Amen? Okay, let's pray. Because I want to pray that more over us. Yes, we're going to stand up. Yes. And what we're going to do, just take a few minutes, and if there's anything that popped in your mind that you feel like the Lord was like, there's that conviction. I, I know I've just got to repent from that. I've got to get rid of that. There it is. Then just do it right now. Let's just do it right now. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. When we come to you and we confess our sins, you forgive us. And the word says you remember them no more. And it is not because you have a bad memory. It's because once it's done, it's done. And you choose no longer to remember that. So God, just thank you that you forgive our sins. And Lord, we're standing because we want more. We want the more that you have for us for this day, for tomorrow, for for every day, every moment of every day, we want the more. We want to be so in sync with your spirit, just like you said, that you're in the Father and the Father's in you and you're in us and we're in you. We're just all intertwined and the Holy Spirit has empowered us and, and made a way for us to always be in complete oneness with you. That's, that's the way you have designed us, to be in complete oneness with you. And so our, our answer to your oneness is yes, we want more. And we know that more is a two-way street, so we give you whatever you desire from us, whatever we're holding back, whatever it is, Lord, the more that you want from us, we give. And we want your reign of more in our lives. We want to be such a carrier of your presence that shadows heal. That when the dry cleaners take our clothes, they get so overwhelmed by the Holy Spirit. When we take our car through the car wash, the guys there, the girls there will just be uh, just drawn to your glory. When we sit in a restaurant, Lord, that there will just be such a release of who you are. And we may not even recognize it. We don't even know what you're doing. But because we are holy, because you are holy, it's a natural release of who you are. A supernatural release, Jesus. So just stir up in us that greater awareness of the more of you, God. And even like uh, Jean released this morning, that there's just going to be these uh, throne room encounters. Uh, the word uh, will become such a, a revelation every time we read it. Each, each letter, each word, each sentence put together will completely wreck us with your presence, God. 
that this is a, a, a no holding back. Everything, everything, God. That people will read about the era that we lived in and say that era was one of the most powerful moves of God because the people of God released a more over this world. So, Lord, we just want to, um, uh, there's a, we want to break the assignment of the enemy that has diluted our minds, infiltrated our thoughts uh, with this worldview that's not your view. And God, right now, we're just declaring the uh, other percentage, it would be 83, 80, 70, 80, 83% that don't have a Christian worldview, a God worldview. Uh, right now, we're just declaring a shift in that right now that there'll be a shift. And when Barna does the research next year, we will see such a dramatic increase. We will see the inverse of it, that, that 83% of, of Christians will have a God worldview. So God, we're declaring with you, you give us numbers so we can uh, agree with what your word says. So we declare that your word is going to be released in such a powerful way, at such a time of revelation that there will be a flipping of the switch yes. and that Jesus, you will be seen as the only way and that we will know that the Bible is the inerrant word of God, that, that there is nothing else, that you are the creator, God. You are, you are the um, uh, deliverer, God. You are the salvation, God. You are everything. So God, we're just declaring that in verse. And, and Lord, we're just thanking you that as new people come into the body of Christ, that, that they will be uh, just infused with the understanding of you and the word and, and, and that uh, it'll almost be like a magnet of wrong thinking will be released to pull all of that out and then an infusion of right thinking. So God, we just thank you for that. And, and Lord, I'm just praying for uh, just a love anointing over the body that they will know us by our love. They will know us by the way we act, the way we talk, the way we tip, um, the way we greet, the way we open doors for people. They will know us by our love. So, God, I just thank you that your word is alive. And it lives in us. And it is actively changing us to be more like you. And we just thank you, Jesus. And we praise and honor you. Yeah, thank you, God. And everybody said, amen. Amen, amen. amen guys. So we're glad to pray for you. If you want to come up, uh, just wear a mask and we